My name's Nicholas McCarthy, I'm 22 and I'm a left-handed pianist and I was born without my left hand. Right hand. I'll do that one again. I have four children, the youngest of whom was born with cerebral palsy. So, it's like the scales have fallen from my eyes. I'm now glimpsing a whole different world which was completely invisible to me before. You know, look at the Paralympics. Look at what that's achieved. Look what is now possible for anyone with any kind of disability in sport. Well, music should be and must be in the same place as that. I'm going to establish an integrated orchestra. In other words, that, that most of the members probably will be disabled in some way, shape or form. And then there may be other members of the group who are not. Because I think you want that kind of transference of experience and ability and understanding. You know, it works both ways. When I arrived at the hospital, I was laughing and joking. I said to the nurses, oh, it's my, my brother's wedding uh, next Saturday. Um, can, I, can I go to the wedding? Oh, no, you won't be well enough. I was shown a video uh, in hospital, and it showed me um, a, a chap in a bed who was just whistling to control the windows and different things. And I thought, I wonder why they showed me this. Is this all I'll be able to do? Rolf? Clarence seems to have disappeared. Have you turned him down? Oh, I've turned it off. When we finished, I turned it off. Oh, OK. Thank, Thank you. you. I'll try a couple of different things and tell me what you like. I like that, but I just need to find what okay. I... It's not what I want. It, it, it's me trying to fit with what you do. It's a good idea. I want to be able to have everybody who wants to make music to be able to make music, no matter what physical or, or mental impairments they might have. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's absolutely the right territory, isn't it? Yeah. You're just finding modal possibilities out yeah. of that, yeah. <laughs> That's fine. What, I, I, what I'm doing is chromatic as well. This blow tube here um, activates the sound if I blow for a long time, you know, I get a longer note. There's also um, an automatic uh, button on here, which means I, it, it'll, it'll sound continuous. So I don't have to, you know, uh, call for the oxygen tent after a couple of minutes or something like that. My father was a rocket engineer, my oldest brother was an electronics engineer, and then I turned out to be the black sheep and became a, a composer, but technologically based. Rolf, I mean, he's got this kind of livid brain, you know, which is computing and refracting and reprocessing. His brain works in a, in a way which I find both enormously impressive and utterly baffling. <laughs> I 
As a young child, I can't say I was actually really aware of my disabilities at all. And um, I thank my family for that, really, because they stressed that it was only a part of who I am and it's not the sum total of who I am as a person. There's so much more to a person than their disability. And when I'm playing the clarinet, you're obviously putting air through that air column of the clarinet, and you can feel that under your fingers, anybody can. But maybe my sense of that is heightened because of my hearing loss. The world of music is immensely, gloriously and richly wide. My orchestra may well feature some drum and bass just as much as it may feature Baroque licks. You know, it's going to be a very broad church. I produce music on a Mac. I also play live using all kinds of software and just recently started to experiment with the iPad. When I'm making music, I feel like a pilot in the cockpit flying an aeroplane. I become alive. I became blind because of the eye infection. And unfortunately, when my father was trying to take me to hospital, it was a rainy day. The bullet cart got stuck in the mud, so it was not meant to be. And a neighbor decided to put a bandage on my eyes with some medicine, which she didn't open for three days. And that's how I became blind. I played with Soul to Soul, Annie Lennox, Boy George, Massive Attack, Paul McCartney as well. But despite of all that, I have not got any promoter, any manager. Nobody wants to help me. I have no interest in just doing a project where it's you know, isn't it nice and fluffy that they all took part? Oh, well done them for taking part. I'm not interested in that. I want to create something of true musical excellence, which can stand up and be counted alongside any other brilliant existing group in this country, group, orchestra, ensemble, whatever. I think it's really important in this project as well that people can see that disability comes in all shapes and sizes. Disability um, means different things to different people who have it. If we are out there doing first-rate stuff, then it will change people's perspectives. I would rather be able to play an instrument again than walk. There's so much joy and things I, I could get from playing an instrument and performing. Um, yeah, it's um, removed some of the paralysis. The issue, the plight, if I can put it like that, of people who have a disability is something which is very raw for me and very, very close to home. So you can imagine, this project is much more than just something that seems like a good idea. It's a real passion project for me. If we can change people's perception of what disability is, if we can raise the bar for prodigiously gifted disabled musicians in this country, then we'll really have made a difference. Iceberg.